हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू डिजी मैं टू एजुकेशन दिस इज ईडीसी लेक्चर फोर एंड आई बिलीव दैट यू मस्ट हैव गॉन थ्रू लेक्चर वन टू एंड थ्री सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस लेक्चर सो प्लीज गो थ्रू इफ यू हैवेंट गो थ्रू द लेक्चर्स वन टू एंड थ्री आई वुड सजेस्ट यू टू फर्स्ट गो थ्रू लेक्चर वन टू एंड थ्री एंड देन मूव ऑन टू लेक्चर फोर so now let's start with the so we are we were basically discussing the intrinsic semiconductor so we are continuing with that this is a sub topic of that so first in the intrinsic semiconductor we are talking we are going to talk about intrinsic <coughs> conductivity so in intrinsic semiconductor both electrons and holes play a major role in deciding the conductivity of the semiconductor <clears throat> they play a major role in deciding both play a major role in deciding the conductivity of the semiconductor so we define the intrinsic conductivity as n q mu n plus p q mu p so this is basically the intrinsic conductivity of the material mo per centimeter or simons per centimeter but in this case as we know that n is equal to p is equal to ni so conductivity becomes ni q mu n plus mu p so this is the conductivity of the intrinsic semiconductor sigma i is proportional to ni and ni is proportional to t to the power 3 by 2 as we have already seen the as we already saw the relationship in the lecture 3 that ni is proportional to t to the power 3 by 2 so we can from here we can infer that this implies that sigma i is proportional to t so 3 by 2 so if conductivity increases with temperature where with the when the temperature also increases so for intrinsic semiconductor conductivity only depends on carry consideration not on mobility okay now let's move to the second topic of discussion second one is intrinsic resistivity intrinsic resistivity it is defined just as a reciprocal of the conductivity so we denote resistivity by rho i is 1 by sigma i is equal to 1 upon ni q mu n plus mu p okay and the unit will be ohm centimeter this is the resistivity of the material let's move to next next topic <clears throat> generation of electron hole pairs so in general you will encounter at uh, most places in the edc lectures in the succeeding lectures that we basically denote the electron hole pairs by ehp so electron hole pairs are also denoted by ehp this is a notation of uh, notation for denoting notation for denoting the electron hole pairs and electron hole pairs are formed due to breaking of of covalent bonds this is the basic point fourth one is recombination so what is meant by recombination recombination is basically the process of recomb recombination of electrons with the holes so elect the recombination of recombination of electrons with holes okay electrons move or jump from conduction band these electrons are basically the free electrons free electrons move or jump from the conduction band to valence band to recombine recombine with the holes 
Remember that the holes can uh, are only present in the valence band; they are not present in the conduction band. So electrons basically jump from the conduction band to valence band to decombine with the holes, and the energy is released in the form of of heat or light. Is it important to note that? Understood. Let's move to the next uh, topic of discussion. So, fifth point is carrier lifetime, which is we denote by tau. Carrier lifetime is the time taken by a charge carrier to recombine with the other charge carrier from the time it generate it is generated to the time it is recombinated. It, it to the time it recombine recombines, so it's a the interval of time from breaking of covalent bonds until recombination. Okay, or the interval of time from generation to recombination. This is what is meant by carrier lifetime. Tau is the average average lifetime of charge carriers. Okay. <clears throat> so last some other point of discussion of the intrinsic semiconductor. to discuss about its main disadvantage main disadvantage of the intrinsic semiconductor is that conductivity is almost <coughs> negligible it is important to note down the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor is almost negligible <clears throat> okay so some point to note down that hole is basically a an absence of electron with the positive charge and hole is a positive mass so there had been a question asked there had been a question in the gate examination before which basically like an mcq where it was asked that the hole is basically is a hole uh, has a positive does hole has a positive does hole have a positive mass or a negative mass so it is basically has a positive mass so it's important to note down it's important to note down that the hole has a positive mass okay now let's now start with the topic of doping doping so what is doping why do we need doping and why do we need the semiconductors and all the main reason behind the doping is improving the conductivity of the material so we can use metals in place of semiconductors which basically have very high conductivity but it is so high that we cannot control so we cannot control the con we cannot cannot control the conductivity of metals so not used in fabrications so not used for fabrications So, but for a semiconductor, we can control the conductivity. We can control the conductivity of a semiconductor. So, what is doping? Doping is the process of adding impurities 
to the intrinsic semiconductor in order to improve its conductivity that's the main reason so doping increases the carrier concentration and therefore increases the conductivity and also we can control the conductivity so we have the trivalent impurities and then we have a pentavalent these are basically third group these are the fifth group okay for example you have boron aluminium gallium indium and for fifth group element we have phosphorus arsenic sb antimony bismuth phosphorus arsenic antimony bismuth so these are basically the p type dopants and these are basically n type dopants uh it is important to note down that we generally go for boron and phosphorus because they ha have more affinity with silicon boron and phosphorus have more affinity with silicon okay so let's discuss about uh, levels of doping different levels of doping so we have a standard dopings so that there are some standard dopings so first one is moderate doping moderate doping is basically from 1 uh, basically 1 is to 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 8 One is to ten to that's basically a ratio. One is to ten to the power six to ten to the power eight. That's basically the doping levels. Doping levels. So the minimum doping, if if asked, minimum doping if asked is one is to ten to the power eight. Okay, and moderate doping if asked, it is one is to ten to the power six. So if someone asks you, what is the moderate doping concentration? that should be your answer should be 1 is to 10 to the power 6 second lightly doped lightly doped light doping is basically the minimum doping 1 is to 10 to the power 11 this is lightly doped lightly doped semiconductor this is the ratio of doping which is which corresponds to lightly uh, light doping third one is heavily doped heavily doped is when, when the doping is done in the ratio of 1 is to 10 to the power 3 we represent this as p plus n plus where p bar n bar So, if you ask, if someone somebody asks you separately, what is the moderate doping concentration, or what is the ratio of the moderate doping, that's basically your answer should be one is to ten to the power six. So, one is to ten to the power. If the doping is done in the one is to ten to the power eleven ratio, that does not have great effect on the conductivity of the semiconductor. but the minimum doping required minimum doping ratio ratio required to convert 
a semiconductor from intrinsic to extrinsic is 1 is to 10 to the power 8. Okay. There are some more points in this. A heavily doped semiconductor is degenerate degenerate semiconductor. A heavily doped semiconductor is also known as degenerate semiconductor. The mass action law is not applicable in the degenerate semiconductor as I told you in the last lecture. Okay. For a let me write, let me mention this again. For a for a degenerate semiconductor, mass action law is not applicable. A moderately doped semiconductor is called non degenerate semiconductor and mass action law can be applied in this case mass action law can be applied so your heavily doped semiconductor is basically a degenerate semiconductor and moderately doped semiconductor is non degenerate semiconductor and uh, it's not it's worthless to mention that uh, the doping impurity the doping uh, dopant, doping impurities are also known as dopants or impurity profile okay so when we basically carry out the dope uh, the, 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 the the process of doping the carrier concentration is, is maximum at the surface so the impurity atoms and impurity profiles must introduce built-in electric field intensity or internal electric field intensity into the semiconductor doping elicits built-in electric field intensity in the semiconductor so built-in electric field intensity must be created only with impurity atoms okay let me just explain it to you with the help of an ex with the diagram so suppose this is basically a semiconductor material and this is basically a semiconductor and you are performing doping process here this is doping so the concentration of the impurity atoms will be maximum at the surface at the surface here and with the and uh, the pheno uh, and through the process of through the phenomena which is known as uh, diffusion the impurity atoms will basically diffuse from the surface like this the diffusion of the charge carriers take place like this the concentration will be maximum at the surface and by following the process uh, following the phenomena called as diffusion these will basically diffuse from the higher concentration to the lower concentration into the semiconductor this is known this is also known as impurity profile impurity profile this is basically the distance x okay so uh, there are basically basically two types of of dopings there are two types of doping first one is uniform doping and the other one is non uniform doping 
Now let's discuss about this. First, uniform doping. Now let's discuss what is the what is basically meant by uniform doping. So in this case, we are basically considering two different uh, 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 subsections. First one is uh, when the when we consider the semiconductor to be in equilibrium, or the system is isolated. Equilibrium, equilibrium or isolated. So. Whenever you encounter an equation which basically includes these two terms, either of these two terms, so you have to consider the scenario that I am going to explain right now. Okay? So, let's say the, the semiconductor is in equilibrium or isolated. Isolated which means that it is not connected. The semiconductor is not connected with the external source. The system or the semiconductor is not connected with the external voltage source or any other type of source. It is totally isolated. Okay. So, let me draw a semiconductor. Suppose this is a basically a block of semiconductor. Let's say we have added the pentavalent impurities which are basically the n-type impurities which we represent by plus ions. We are talking about the uniform doping which means that the distribution of the immobile ions is totally uniform throughout the semiconductor. Doping the distribution you can say distribution of impurities is uniform throughout. Okay? So they carry electronic charge like this this represents let's say uh, distance x so since the since in this case you can see that uh, dn by dx i'm going i will explain the term i will explain this term in the later section so, dn by dx is basically the concentration gradient. Concentration gradient of the electrons which are the majority charge carriers in this semiconductor block. This is basically an extrinsic semiconductor because we have doped the intrinsic semiconductor with the n-type impurities or the pentavalent impurities. So, dn by dx as we move from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l. So, let's say the l is basically the length of the semiconductor. The dn by dx, the concentration gradient is equal to zero if the concentration gradient is zero there is no diffusion current no diffusion current no diffusion no diffusion current so there is a relationship between the diffusion current and dn by dx dn by dx plays an important role in deciding the nature of diffusion current since dn by dx is equal to zero there is no diffusion current also, the built-in electric field intensity, since the doping has been, uh, 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 since from the time it was doped, since the time it, the semiconductor block was doped, now it has achieved a state of uniform doping. All the atoms, all the immobile ions have distributed themselves in a uniform fashion and the concentration is uniform throughout the semiconductor. So now, there is no built-in electric field intensity electric field intensity is basically equal to zero hence there is also no drift current drift current is also equal to zero so net current which is i is equal to i n diffusion plus i n drift is equal to zero plus zero is equal to zero hence for a uniform for a uniformly doped semiconductor if it is kept in equilibrium or is isolated there is no there is no current which flows through the semiconductor because nothing is also connected externally with the semiconductor also dn by dx is equal to zero there is no built-in electric field intensity 
so diffusion and drift currents will be equal to zero okay now let's discuss the second case second case when external voltage is applied b external voltage applied if some external voltage is applied so this was the semiconductor okay this was uniformly doped let's say we now apply some external voltage cross this now this semiconductor is no more isolated or in equilibrium since this port is basically positively charged this is negatively charged as it is clear from the diagram that the semiconductor block is uniformly doped so there is no concentration gradient from here we can easily infer that there is no concentration gradient so we can say that dn by dx is basically equal to zero hence there is no diffusion current i diffusion is equal to zero there is no diffusion current i am saying again and again please note down this that since it is uniformly doped dn by dx concentration gradient is equal to zero there is no diffusion current second since there is there is an external voltage applied there will be a built in electric field intensity which will be directed in this fashion this is the direction of the internal built in electric field intensity the drifting of the electrons will now take place in the opposite direction to that of electric field intensity so electrons so electrons will basically drift in the opposite direction to that of the elect, for, uh, that of the electric field intensity so this is basically an electron the drifting of the electron will be from left to right so electrons will basically drift in the left to right direction so electrons are drifting like this electrons are drifting from left to right electric field intensity is from positive to negative which is from right to left and electrons will move from left to right so built in electric field intensity from right to left electrons drift from left to right so ion drift current flows from right to left because of this drift current flows from right to left so this is direction of the drift current so net current is i is equal to i diffusion plus i drift is equal to 0 plus i drift which is equal to i drift so the current the main the current is mainly due to the drifting of the electrons so for a uniformly doped semiconductor if external voltage is applied the main current which flows in the semiconductor is due to the drifting of the charge carriers okay uh, it should be clear to you okay now let's move on to non uniform doping non uniform doping again we are going to take two different cases one is when the semiconductor is in equilibrium a equi librium or isolated okay so consider the block of semiconductor 
here you can see it will be non uniformly doped so here it is the this, this semiconductor is basically a non uniformly doped semiconductor okay this is x again it contains electrons there are charge you can see from here we can we can easily see there is a concentration gradient there does exist a concentration gradient dn by dx is not equal to 0 dn by dx is not equal to 0 hence electrons diffuse electrons diffuse in this direction electrons diffuse from left to right so electrons diffuse from left to right electrons basically diffuse from left to right this leads to diffusion current sorry since the electrons are diffusing from left to right the diffusion current diffusion current will flow from will be from right to left direction of the diffusion current will be from right to left so i n diffusion from right to left now wait since the positive ions are in greater number on the left side than on the right side so this creates a polarity plus at the on the left side and polarity negative on the right side so so plus charge appear on the left side negative charge a negative polarity appears on the right side so the electric field intensity there will be a built in electric field intensity from right to left there will be a uh, built in electric field intensity from right to left this will cause electrons to drift electrons to drift from right to left so since e is not equal to 0 built in electric field intensity from it is not equal to 0 this may cause electrons to drift from right to left okay this will create a diffusion current this will create a diffusion current so the diffusion current from diffusion current from left to right i n drift current sorry this will create a drift current i n drift current from left to right so from here we can conclude that diffusion current flows from right to left diffusion current diffusion current flows from right to left drift current drift current flows from left to right hence net current will be equal to i n diffusion plus i n drift equal to 0 since i n drift current and i n diffusion current will cancel each other as they are in opposite direction and since nothing is connected from the outside nothing is connected uh, outside neither a voltage source nor current source so net current net current net current is 0 amperes okay so let's move on to the next uh, sub part of this now b is when uh, external voltage applied so there are, there are, it is again subdivided into two subsections first one is 
ओरिएंटेशन ओरिएंटेशन वन लेट्स सी व्हाट इज द ओरिएंटेशन वन दिस इज अ सेमीकंडक्टर ब्लॉक दिस अगेन नॉन यूनिफॉर्म डोपिंग in this the voltage source is connected like this the positive terminal on the right side and the negative terminal on the left side the external voltage source is applied so from here since there will be a built in electric field intensity there will be a built in electric field there will be an electric field intensity from positive terminal to the negative terminal this will cause the electrons to drift from left to right and hence the drift current flows in drift current flows from right to left also 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 the external voltage applied will allow the electrons to diffuse from left to right okay since the positive terminal of the battery is connected on the right side so this will allow the electrons to diffuse electrons to diffuse diffuse from left to right creating a diffusion current a diffusion current from right to left remember the built in electric field intensity due to the non uniform doping does not have that much effect as due to the external electric field intensity applied so this electric field intensity applied overpowers the built in electric field intensity which is created due to the non uniform doping and which is directed from left to right so this basically cancels the electric field intensity the built in electric field intensity which which could possibly be directed from left to right in as in this case so the net electric field intensity will be from right to left so this will this will basically cause the electrons to drift from left to right this will cause the electrons to drift from left to right creating drift current from right to left hence we can say that i net is i diffusion plus i drift and this is not equal to zero that's basically the summing up of that's basically the sum of diffusion and drift currents okay this was the orientation one now let's study about the orientation two in the orientation two we just reverse the polarity we just reverse the polarities of the external voltage applied so we are now connecting the external voltage like this the sample is the same but now we are we have now reversed the polarities this is plus and this is minus from here it is clear that the electric field intensity is basically directed from left to right and the built in electric field intensity is also directed from left to right so the net electric field intensity will be equal to the sum of external electric field intensity and the built in electric field intensity okay this is plus and minus so this will cause the electrons to drift in the positive directions so electrons will basically drift in the positive direction creating a diffusion creating a drift current i n drift current from left to right but here in this case the external potential will not allow the electrons to diffuse from left to right so there is no diffusion of electrons takes place no diffusion of electron electrons takes place so hence there is no diffusion current there is no diffusion current so we can say that i net is in diffusion 
plus i n drift this is equal to 0 and i n drift so the total current which flows is basically due to the drifting of the majority charge carriers okay this is important to note down that in the orientation word what we saw the electrons diffuse as well drift creating a net current which is not equal to zero which is also equal to the sum of drift and diffusion currents but in the orientation two when we reverse the polarities of the external voltage applied there is no diffusion of the charge carrier taking place only drifting of the electrons is taking place hence diffusion current becomes equal to zero and drift current flows so i net will be equal to drift current okay folks i am ending this lecture here just go through the topic the go through the lecture carefully try to note down try to jog down all the points which i marked separately as important and please this theory is important because most of the questions which are asked on the ed subject are theory based you should be clear with the theoretical concepts because you can easily solve the numerical problems that would basically pop up that would basically if pop up in the gate examination you could be able to solve those thank you very much